Nitesh Dile and welcome to Tibet This Week. This is Sakina Bhatt with another edition of Weekly News on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines first. His Holiness the Dalai Lama congratulates Japan's new emperor, Naruhito. His Holiness the Dalai Lama offers condolences over former Indiana Senator Richard Luger's death. CTA president meets former Tibetan political prisoners and their families. China arrests Tibetan University student for decrying lack of government job opportunities for Tibetan students. Tibetan man tortured for singing Tibetan national anthem dies. U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. His Holiness the Dalai Lama congratulated Japan's new emperor Naruhito on his enthronement on the dawning of the new Rewa era on Wednesday this week. In his congratulatory letter, His Holiness wrote, Over the last 50 years or so, during regular visits to Japan, I have deeply appreciated the interest and enthusiasm that people from all walks of life have shown in my efforts to encourage the cultivation of such fundamental human values as compassion and religious harmony. His Holiness further lauded the resilience of the people of Japan and for the way the nation rose up again from the ashes of World War II. His Holiness the Dalai Lama offered condolences over the passing away of Senator Richard Lugar, former Indiana Senator. In his condolence letter, His Holiness said, As a Tibetan, I greatly appreciate his many years of support to the Tibetan cause, including in the meeting that I have had with senators during my several visits to Washington, D.C. Support by him and his colleagues have been one of the sources of encouragement to the Tibetan people not to give up hope and to continue with our nonviolent struggle for freedom. Former Indiana Senator Richard Lugar was a foreign policy icon in the Senate and he had received the nation's highest civilian award for his efforts to secure and destroy weapons of mass destruction after the collapse of Soviet Union. CTA President Dr. Lopsang Singe met with the first batch of former Tibetan political prisoners from this year and their family members who are to leave for Australia soon through a special immigration service extended by the Australian government. Dr. Singe informed the gathering about the certain challenges and crisis they might face in the beginning but assured them that soon they will learn to integrate with the people, lifestyle and culture of the new country. He further advised them to be aware of their true identity and roots, asking their parents to engage their children in the weekend classes where they can learn Tibetan language, culture and Tibetan Buddhism. Three new secretaries of the Central Tibetan Administration take charge of their respective office following their promotion to the post this week. Paldan Gundup, former director of Tibetan Reception Center, took charge as secretary of the Department of Health, while Tsewang Dolma Chosur, former additional secretary at the Department of Home, took charge as a director of Tibet Policy Institute. Tsewang Gyalpo Arya, former additional secretary of the Department of Information and International Relations, took charge of the information secretary. Meanwhile, Tsiring Yanki, the outgoing director of Tibet Policy Institute, took charge as the Secretary of Public Service Commissions. The respective office of the new secretaries held a brief handover ceremony between the incoming and outgoing secretaries in the presence of the staff and well-wishers. The post of secretary is the highest in the hierarchy of CTA staff designation. According to Radio Free Asia on 16th April 2019, the Chinese government has arrested a master's degree Tibetan student from the Northwest Minzu University in Lancho City after he wrote an essay which criticized the falling number of government job opportunities for Tibetans. The prize for writing that essay for his civil servant entrance exam proved disproportionately high for Sunam as he was arrested and now little is known about his whereabouts. Sunam was forcefully taken from the Chinese University by the Tibet Education Bureau. A Tibetan man formally detained and tortured for singing the Tibetan national anthem in April 2016, Pema Wangchen from Karze, passed away last Friday at a hospital in the Chinese city of Chengdu, Sichuan province. According to reports, Pema Wangchen died from prolonged illness sustained through torture suffered while in Chinese police custody three years ago. On 
13th February 2016, on the fifth day of Losar, Pema Wangchen sang the Tibetan national anthem in public at his native village in Karze County, a video of which was widely shared on the social media. After two months, he was arrested. Pema Wangchen suffered health problems and his health continued to deteriorate ever since. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom called out China as one of the world's worst prosecutors of religious faiths in its 2019 annual report released on Monday this week. The Commission also cited 16 countries in its 234-page report as countries of particular concern under the international religious freedom. It specially noted China's ongoing severe repression on religious groups. For further discussion on the report, we have with us Tine Chukila from the Human Rights Decks of CTA. Tine Chukila, welcome to Tibet this week. Thank you, Sukhmani. So firstly, can you please mention a little bit about um, the report, what is mentioned in the report on Tibet? Um, sure. Um, so this report, as you said, talks about the uh, religious freedom that is uh, quite repressed in China. Uh, when it comes to particularly on Tibet, uh, there are five major points which the report discusses. Firstly, it's about the suppression of Tibetan Buddhism. And this suppression is going through the technological advancement which China has achieved. Uh, say the surveillance mechanism, which is it is using extensively to monitor the Tibetan Buddhists, and also by controlling the monastic education. Um, and uh, secondly, when it comes to uh, freedom of religion, you also have access to the religious places. And China is suppressing that freedom by ensuring that the Tibetan students during their holidays are not allowed to uh, pay their visits to the monasteries or involve in religious activities. And thirdly, uh, China has been suppressing the uh, uh, religious freedom of Tibetans uh, by ensuring that uh, the religion itself is sinicized. When we say sinicization of Tibetan Buddhism, what China is actually doing is ensuring that the nuns and the monks are uh, given political re-education uh, and then people who do not, and one of the major aspects of this political re-education is denouncement of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And when the nuns and the monks do not do that, they are uh, first of all thrown out of the monasteries, and secondly they are arrested and then uh, you know tortured uh, in the prison. And uh, again, another aspect of the freedom of religion is also about Mm, ensuring that there is freedom of movement for the believers. When you talk about freedom of movement, the Tibetans are not allowed to go outside Tibet or even within uh, you know, the Tibetan Autonomous Region, as China calls it. And also the almost entire banning of issuing of passport to Tibetans, which resulted in um, Tibetans not being able to take part in religious activities outside Tibet, say in Nepal or in India. So these are the major aspects which have been highlighted in the report. Okay, so um, there are recommendations also mentioned in the report. So can you briefly tell us about that as well? Um, sure. Whenever the commission comes out with a, a report, mm -hmm. uh, it generally submits a list of recommendations uh, both to the U.S. Congress and the U.S. government. So in this uh, 2019 report, there are some major recommendations which the commission has made, uh, specifically asking the U.S. government whenever they hold bilateral talks with China, be it on trade or security, uh, they should ensure that the topic of religious freedom in China and also the situation of human rights conditions in China is brought up and there is a right message sent specifically on the uh, ethnic minority situation in um, uh, Tibet and other parts of China. And secondly, uh, whenever the U.S. government or the U.S. Congress is giving funding, uh, they should ensure that the priority is given to these ethnic minorities uh, which are working on the ensuring of religious freedom, protection and, um, uh, and promotion of culture and language. Thirdly, mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of uh, influence of China in um, U.S., specifically in the academic institutions. So what the commission has recommended is that the U.S. government should work closely with the businesses, with the non-governmental institutions, organizations, and academic institutions to ensure that the influence of China on these um, business fields, on these academic institutions, are um, kind of reduced. Um, Specifically, when it comes to the U.S. Congress, the Commission has recommended that the U.S. Congress should support the legislations which are uh, providing for restrictions to be imposed on the export of technological uh, equipments uh, to China. Uh, it is very interesting to note that these technological in 
instruments, specifically the biometric and the surveillance cameras, are being used to monitor and um, kind of suppress the minorities and specifically as the report mentions the Tibetan Buddhists. So these are the major recommendations which the commission has made and uh, the commission feels that these, uh, if these recommendations are adopted, there will be more uh, ensurement of religious freedom within China. Thank you so much, Tanish Bila, for the information and the time. Thank you, Sapunala. That's all for this week's news on Tibet This Week. See you next time and have a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs>